the 28th chapter. I want to take the time to thank all of the pastors who stand by us. Amen. Who are committed to us. We appreciate you. Our elders. Amen. Our deacons, our ministers, all the volunteers and the sound, the sanctuary coordinator, coordinators, the vehicle parking attendants. Amen. I, I see you, Mike. I know you're smiling because Audrey here. Audrey, wave your hand at us. It's so good to have Deaconess Audrey back in the house. Amen. She was sick, but now she's recovered and she's well. But she got to sit in the back. Amen. So she don't get too excited up in the front. Just relax yourself. Amen. Amen. And it's always a blessing to have Sister Minister Myra Polite back in the house. Looking all Afro-centralized. Amen. Amen. Nothing wrong with that. Celebrate you. Yes, 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 yes. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Amen. And all of you who come here every Sunday believing that this is the place that God has designated for your life. Thank you for your consistency. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your prayers. And most of all, thank you for your love. I love you so, so much. See, I knew I was going to get that response. Amen. Amen. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Nothing wrong with response. So we're going to begin at Genesis, the 28th chapter, beginning at the 11th verse. And we're going to read all the way to the 22nd verse. I may die out, but please continue to read in unison. Amen? Amen. Here begin the reading of God's holy word. All together. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. Continue. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place. This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that city was called Luz at the first. And Jacob vowed a vow saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. I will be reading in your hearing verses 16 and verses 20 and 21. And God awakened him out of his sleep. And he said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. Verse 20. And Jacob vowed a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. My, t- my title for this morning is, Surely God is in this place. Amen. Our God and our most gracious Father, we thank you for your people who have come to hear your word. Now God, open up their eyes, open up their minds, Open up their hearts so they can receive what you have to say to them, God. So they will leave this place, but never your presence, understanding that you have a place for them physically, you have a place for them mentally, you have a place for them spiritually, because surely, God, surely.
surely God, you are in this place. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This is a story that we've probably rehearsed and read a lot of times in church, but I'm hoping, praying, believing that God has just a little something extra for us this morning. Amen. Surely God is in this place. That word surely means strong, assertive force. You have to be sure that where you are, God is there in this time. Surely, you hear me, Damaris? Surely God is in this place. Chapter 28 begins with Isaac conferring the Abrahamic covenant upon Jacob. You remember the first time. This is the second time he's doing it. The first time he did it, you remember, was a little chicory involved. He did it unwittingly. This time, he does it decisively. The first time he did it because they had favorites. But I thought about that elder Manji, and I thought about why would a wife trick her husband into doing something because she had a favorite child. And as I searched the scriptures, I found out that when she was pregnant and carrying these two babies, two boys, the rumble in the jungle, carrying one is enough. Can you imagine two boys in your womb at the same time? I got, I got two boys in the house at the same time. I know what that is. That is forget about being inside of me. Two boys. And she went to God and said, God, if it be so, then why am I thus? Yes, 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 yes. If this is what you promised for me, then why do I have this internal struggle going on on the inside of me? If this is your word, if this is your promise, then why is the struggle going on inside of me? And the Bible says that the Lord spoke to her and told her that there's two nations. There's two nations within thy womb. And the younger will serve the elder. In my opinion, and in my thought process, I'm thinking they was married 20 years. I think they had a conversation about this. They were married 20 years before they had any kids. Can you imagine? Yes, sir. 20 years they were married before they had a baby. I'm sure she told Isaac what God told her. So that's why she was so determined to make sure that this blessing was inferred upon Jacob. Now, it doesn't make her actions right. We're not justifying those actions because God is God. And guess what? He don't need your help. But God comes along and brings the blessing the second time. And as Isaac is conferring this blessing on him, he does something different this time. He gives him a charge before the blessing. The charge precedes the blessing. The charge precedes the promise. He tells him that you have to leave. Now, I don't know about you, but if my son is going to be going to college in a few, well, two more years, y'all pray for me. Pray for me. This is the last rah, 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 rah. He's going to be going to college in two years. And, and I'm already having separation anxiety. Now, he was 40 years old, so I'm sure his parents was feeling some kind of something. Uh, think about it. You ever held on to something so long, and then when it's time to let it go, it's a, li- it's a little hard to let it go. But they had to move him on to his next. And the issue is the charge has to do with his connection. The charge has to do with who he's connected to. The Bible says, I believe in the 26th chapter of Genesis, around the 37th verse, that Esau married someone and it was a grief to his parents, to his father and his mother. Don't you know your kids can do some things sometimes? Not all the time, but sometimes, and it becomes a grief to the parents. Okay, let me back up because you're all talking about the kids. Sometimes we've done things to grieve the father. Yes, 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 yes. 
So to avoid this, to avoid the blessing going to people who don't understand how to carry the blessing, Rachel, excuse me, Rebecca goes to Isaac and says, I'm grieved. And I love it when a husband listens to a wife. And when she's speaking right to him, and she says to him, I'm grieved because of these daughters here. We need to get our son, if this promise is going to come to pass, he has to marry outside of all this that's around him. He has to do something different to break this cycle. So they come together. They're in unity this time. There's something powerful when a husband and wife are in unity. Yes. and have. Yes. This time, it's not one batting against the other. This time, they're both in agreement about this boy. Well, this man, he's 40 years old, so he's a big boy. They're in agreement about him. But at the same time, I know that there's, it's complex. It's complex to leave, to, to, to have him to leave this home, to have him go somewhere else. But they meet him and they said, you know what? You have to go. So they sent Jacob to Bethuel. Now, Bethuel, you have to understand where they're sending him. They're just not sending him out. They're sending him to her father's house, right? And I thought about this. So it's either God, his name Bethuel means God destroys, a man of God, a dweller in God. This time, he obeys. He obeys and he leaves his family. Can you imagine what he must have been feeling? The depression, to have everything and to lose it all and have to go someplace where nobody knows him. I thought about the homeless population, how they have so much and then they have nothing. Or maybe Hurricane Sandy, you lost everything and then have to start over. Do you, can you imagine what that must have felt like to him? But guess what? When you have to leave, you have to go to a place where you know, surely God is in the place. That's, he's not just leaving to go somewhere. He's leaving with a promise. And when you have the promise of God over your life, you can move assuredly. But you have to believe that God is set, oh, who he says he is. And without him, you can't do anything. So surely, surely God is in this place. And Jacob begins this 40-day, excuse me, this 40-mile journey. 40 days, that sounds like the wilderness. But this 40 mile, this 40, but can you imagine walking for 40 miles? How many steps is that? <laughs> I'm just saying, right? So we know about, it's, 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 it's a couple of days, it's, it's, a good, it's a good distance, right? And remember, it's not like he can stop at the bodega or 7-Eleven. You know, that was one thing when I moved out to Long Island, I was looking for the bodegas, and they said, no, no, 7-Eleven is the bodegas out here. I said, oh, okay, that's the bodega. Thank you. Yeah, okay, y'all not with me? 7-Elevens. Where you could get things from, where you could buy the convenience store. Okay, 7-Eleven, Bodega. Those of you from Brooklyn, give me a shout. Do something with me. Thank you. Thank you. So I was looking for the Bodega. And they said, no, it's the 7-Eleven. No Bodegas, okay? At least not on that side of town. Amen. Thank you. I appreciate that. So here he is. Now he has to sit with what he's done. Sometimes God moves you to a place so you can sit and reflect on your actions. Sometimes it's in the stillness that you can hear him. Now remember, I don't know about you, but my fa if, if you have anything that's a favorite, that means that you sort of dot on it a little bit. You know, you're doting. You take care of it. And he had to leave his favorite, familiar place and as he left this place I'm sure in his mind there had to be some conflict going on there had to be some remorse feelings going on because remember he's still a twin and even though he and Esau might not have get on got along but they're still I'm going to miss my brother oh come on and we got any siblings in here that get on your nerves but if they're not around you you still miss them come on at least one, amen, one of the siblings, amen. You still miss them because you know what? At the end of the day, that sibling will have your back. If you get pushed up in a corner far enough, you can call up. I 
got Helene and Selene, and trust me, they're gangster. If I have to call them up, they will be here. Amen? Amen. Don't you have a sibling that'll be here for you? Now, here we have Jacob. He has nothing. That's hard. It's hard to start over. It's hard to start over. Here he is. First of all, he has no wife. He's not married, so he doesn't have the companionship of a wife. No mother, no father. And remember, he was rich. He left wealth. His father, Isaac, was rich. So he was, it wasn't like, you know, he was living and, you know, didn't have, he had maid servants and man servants, anything that he wanted in his heart. He had it. So he had to leave all of that. Don't you know sometimes God lets you go up and then brings you down? Oh, who am I talking to this morning that's feeling like at one place I was up and now I'm here and I don't understand it? Come on, church. I want you to know that God is in the, surely, I want to let you know forcefully, surely God is in the place. Don't you dare, don't you dare remorse over what you had and what it used to be and how he used to treat you and what she used to do. God is in the place. Put your hands together and give him any cop. Oh, come on. You better do better than that. Surely. I'm giving you a surely this morning, Autumn. Surely God is in this place. He wants you to know that. When you leave something behind, he always has something better in front. Always has something better in front of you. Always, not sometimes, always. Here he is hopeless. Hopeless. All he has is a charge and a promise. The promise, obedience to the charge is based on the promise being fulfilled. Oh, I'm going to say it again because some of us are a little bewildered as saints. Obedience to the charge is that's 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 what the prop the promise is precedent on the charge. What is the charge that God has given you over your life? Come on, what is the charge that God has given you over? Life? If you don't know it, ask him. God, what is the charge that you've given me over my life? He wants you to know for he doesn't want it obscure, he doesn't want you confused, he wants you to know why he created you. You're created for purpose. You're created for purpose. Don't you dare let the enemy back you up into a corner and tell you you're useless. The devil is a liar this morning. I don't care if you're 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. If you're still here, you're created for purpose. I need the church to put your hands together and believe. Oh, I came to stir up some belief in here this morning. I'm sick and tired of the devil taking our faith. I'm sick and tired of the saints acting like saints, like second class citizens. This is the Lord's earth. This, the earth belongs to the Lord and the fullness thereof. Everything in him belongs to him. I don't have to put my hands together. Oh me, oh my, what's going to happen to me? God has my back. care what the relationship looks like God has your back you hear me baby God has your back surely the Lord is in this place come on church say it for her say it surely the Lord is in come on there's some force behind that you hear me Keishan I believe God's word. Be still and know that I am God. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. No time in trouble. I may not even know I'm in trouble. I may not even know I'm in trouble. But that's why he's a present help in trouble. Because I may not know I'm in trouble. This 
is God's house. Surely God is in this place. Surely. I got that blessed assurance. Surely. Sit down. You're making me nervous now. I feel like pastor. Wait, wait, let me do it. Did you get that, Kevin? Make sure you show him that. And devastation, loss, despair, all of that. And he takes a stone, two stones, three stones. Wait, wait, I missed something. The Bible says that he lights upon a certain place. This triggered something in me, Simone. I remember Ruth in the second chapter. In the third verse, the Bible says that Ruth lighted upon the field of Boaz. So Jacob, my brother, your turnaround is about to start. Surely it's happening right now, Jacob. The moment you light up on the place that God has designated for you, seemingly accidental, but apparently divine, God has a message for you. Seemingly, you came in here accidentally. Seemingly. Seemingly, mentor. Seemingly. However, you need to know, star, that God has appointed a divine assignment. Oh, I came to say it, Damaris. You have a divine assignment and it's connected to you being in the place. So, he sleeps, he has these stones, and as he sleeps, he begins to dream. Studies show that when we dream, we dream for three main reasons. There may be more, but you dream because there's trouble surrounding you and you need a solution. Or you may dream because you're trying to incorporate some memory. So perhaps he's dreaming about how it used to be. Or he could have dreamt about what God had for him back in the old country with his parents. The third reason for dreams is you are trying to deal with your emotions. You're processing your emotions. When all you have left is a dream. I'm in this place because of what I did. Jacob is in his position because he was the trickster. And his brother was going to kill him. And his brother told his mother, I'm going to kill him. Can you imagine what that feels like as a mother that your other son comes to you to tell you that she's good for something that you did? She convinced him to fool his father. He listened to her, but she, so, so I'm going to go back a little bit. I talk about influential power, women. I talk about God has given the man positional power, but he's given us influential power. And whenever we use that influential power outside of God's desire, there's always chaos. Oh, I'm going to say it again because y'all don't want to hear me. I'm going to say it. You have influential power, women. And whenever you step out of God's will and you use that power to satisfy your own needs and your own emotion, you cause chaos. The man didn't say it. I said it. I said it. It's just the truth. Scripture supports it. Here you have it. A chaotic situation. Here you have it. He's trying to figure it out. He has nobody. I'm so glad, though, there's a man that his mother is sending him to. 
that's going to turn some things around. And for single moms, those of you who don't have a, you need to have a man in your son's life. I, I, and I wrote this in my notes. I have to go back. I want to thank all the men of the house of Judah, the godly men. Stand up. Stand up, godly men. If you're a godly man and you know it, stand up. Okay? Because God has chosen you to model a behavior. Godly men, even if you're not a member of the house of Judah and you're a godly man, stand up. Godly men, God has chosen you to model a behavior. And guess what? It's because this way when they see you, when sons and daughters see you, they know how they ought to walk uprightly. Give the godly men a round of applause, ladies. You may be seated. You need to be in a place where there's godly men. So she sends him to a place where she knows, one, there's a godly presence, and two, the women that are there are like her. <laughs> Why is that important? Because remember, Rebecca had to leave her family to come to Isaac. She had to go to a place that she was unfamiliar with. So this smart, now I love it when she thinks. Here she, go to my brother and get one of those, get one of his daughters and marry her. Because the woman who you connect with has to be able to handle this promise. Come on, church. We just can't connect with anybody just to be connected. Remember when it was time for her to leave? They asked, they asked her mother, and her mother said, well, um, we're not so sure. And her brother was like, they was teeter-tottering, trying to mess up her blessing. Maybe you she should stay a week before we let her go. And they said, well, you know what? Can we ask her? It was time for her to take off her bobby socks, put them hosiery on. Eyes out of here. <laughs> Listen, get, wait, hold on, let me make this very practical. Here's Isaac's servant coming with Camels, jewelry, all those things. I mean, lots of gifts. And she has to figure it out. And he's a godly man. And he's connected to a promise. See, we're looking at the wrong thing. We're looking at the wrong thing. Before you say yes, you need to see what he's connected to. So they said, well, ask her. Ask the damsel. And if she says yes, then that's what it is. She's like, peace. Peace. I'm out. So she knows that sending her son there, he will have a connection with a woman that's not afraid to leave. Because see, in her mind, in Rebecca's mind, she believes that he's coming back. And when he comes back, if God is who he says he is, then all this belongs to him. So I just don't want to leave my dowry or my hard work to any old body. They're just going to flush it and not appreciate it. She wants to make sure her son is connected to someone that's going to appreciate what she's done. Oh, come on. You have to make sure that you're connected with someone that's going to appreciate all the work you've done on you. I can't get no help up in here, Nessa. Oh, you come on, Damaris. He got to value all of this, all of this, all of this, all, all, all of it. All of this. All of this. Right, Bernice? All of it. So make sure. Amen. I know that I got the, the men like, lady, <laughs> lady, can you help us out, lady? I did. I did y'all the first, right? Come on. Y'all know when Pastor gets up here, he's all. <laughs> Brothers, can you hear me? Right? <laughs> so I got to balance it out a little bit. Amen? <laughs> it's just good. It's just good. Value you. So, he dreams, and as he dreams, he has a prophetic 
vision. And the reason why I say it's prophetic, because some scholars suggest, Pastor Allen, that the latter is representation of Jesus the Christ. Of his exaltation from heaven and then his uh, humiliation on earth. And in order to get to God, you have to go through him. You always have to go up. So I understand that. Because the Bible says in John 3, 16, church, I know you're going to help me. For God so, that he did what? That should, but, for God said, but, and <laughs> he that believeth is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Because he's not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that this glorious light has come into the world, but men love darkness rather than evil. Why, church? Because their deeds were evil. And then John picks it up in 2 John, I believe around the second chapter, the first John, excuse me, the second chapter, he says, and these things I write unto you, little children, that you sin not. But if any man sin, we have an advocate. Yes. We have an advocate with the Father. What's an advocate? That person just speaking in my behalf. He's just talking about me. And usually the advocate knows more about the situation than you do. Usually the advocate can bring you out. Oh, come on. We have an advocate with the Father, right? We have him. And this, this is just showing. And he's up there. Jesus up there. God, listen, she's going to get it together. She's going, he's just speaking on your behalf. And when you know that God is speaking on your behalf, you can say, surely God is in this place. Come on, church. Surely. Surely. Assertively. Surely. Falsely. God is in this place. So he has this prophetic vision, and God begins to speak to him. Jehovah Shammah. Y'all didn't say that when worship and praise team. Ha, 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 ha. I got what I was saying. They better not Shammah. As long as they don't Shammah, they can gyra and they can Shalom, but they better not Shammah. So they didn't Shammah. <laughs> Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. Here God reinforces the promise to him again. Here is God telling him again who he is. Your seed is going to be the north, the south, the west, and the east. All the families of the earth are going to be blessed in you. He's telling them this in his sleep. And, he, and then he gives them a fresh promise. He says, I will bring thee again into this land. I will not leave thee until I have done which I have spoken of. Jacob awakes out of his sleep and says, surely, no doubt, now I know God is in this place. Listen, when you have a revelation from God, when you don't deserve it, when you've done something wrong and yet God speaks on your behalf, he advocates, oh, come on, you need to bless him right there. We sitting up here acting like we do it right all the time. Come on, that's what makes this deal so sweet. Oh, come on. Come on, it gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Blessed assurance. Not when I've got it right, when I don't want to do right, when I don't have to do right in me. Oh, come on. Is it only me, Pastor Felix? Tell me it's not only me. Guess what he said? If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And that takes away the guilt. But you got to talk to him. You got to talk to him, church. You got to bless his name. You got to worship him. You have to say something in the atmosphere to him. I know what it is. I know what it is to sit there and not say nothing because you're just frustrated and tired and don't believe. But I also know what God's word says. 
if I just bless him, if I open up, if I can't say a word, I don't care what it looks like. Oh, I don't care what it looks like. I'm going to preach it until you get it today. I don't care what it, oh, come on. It's almost, come on. I need the believers to worship. I don't, come on. There's a breakthrough coming. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what's in your mind. Press through it. Press through it. Press through it. Come on, God is here. Surely God is, come on. Surely God is in this place. He brought you here because he's here. Surely God is in this place. And he awakens with a revelation. God, let your church waken with a revelation. Oh, wake up your church with a revelation, God. Oh, Lord. He wakes up with a revelation. Surely God. It's in this place, and I knew it not. And that's okay. That's okay because that's the place he's in. He didn't have to know it because he lighted up on the place, so he couldn't have known. Don't you know God makes divine appointments just for you? Just when you want to go one way, he sends a word that stabilizes you to go this way. God never messed it up for you like that. God never messed. I know he messed it up for me a lot of times like that. A lot of times before salvation, after salvation, during salvation, before marriage, in marriage. Can I get some real people? God ever messed it up for you? Well, he's here to mess it up for you again today. I just want to warn you. Be warned, be warned, be warned. He awakens with a heart response. Surely God is in this place. How do you know it's a heart response, lady? He speaks differently. The place where he is is called Luz. Lose, lose. The patients say, lose, lose. Am I right? Lose, lose. And he changed it to Bethel. Now, lose means resurrection almond tree so even in this place God is resurrecting his life God is resurrecting his life to the point where his language now changes and he believes that this where he is is the house of God what an encounter don't you want an encounter like that that God does some resurrection. Is, is there anything in you that needs to be resurrected? Your faith, your hope, your trust, the way that you see God's word resurrected inside of you. And he changes the name of the place to house of God. Then Jacob does something else. This is the first time this word is mentioned in scripture. He vows. Don't you know when you have an encounter with God, you have to make a vow? Okay, all right, let me say it like this. They don't want to talk to me about that. Let me, let me come down a little bit. How about when you get in trouble, then you're ready to make a vow? God, if you get me out of this one. Oh, okay, I'm the only one again. See, Val, they keep leaving me by myself, Chrisette. I know I'm not by myself. If you, if, if, if you get me out of this mess, that's the vow, the problem. You, thank you, Lisa. If you get me out of this one, I promise, I promise, Right? First time. It's interesting. You know what's interesting? Here is the supplanter, the trickster, changing his mind. If God can change his mind, if God can do it for him, then he could do it for me. Is there anything? Oh, come on. I need the believers. Is there anything? Is there anything too hard for our God? Oh, I love it. Thank you for saying no. Amen. There's nothing too hard for our God. So at this place, he recognizes that, God, I need something different. He begins to talk to God. This is the first time Jacob is talking to God. 
Do you need an experience to help you talk to God? Oh. When he has an assignment for you, sometimes an experience will help you talk to him. Sometimes he has to move you away from everything that's familiar to help you talk to him. Sometimes you have to take away everything that you knew to be so, so that you can talk to him. I didn't say this in the word. But it's interesting what Jacob says. This is how you know he had a heart change. He says, God, if you be with me, keep me in this way that I go. Give me something to eat. And he actually asked for bread, not even like lamb. Give me some bread and just something to put on my back. Some and then he says, and bring me back to my father's house in peace. A repented heart. A change in position. God, I don't want to come back. Sunday after Sunday, the way that I left. Let me come Let me come back with a different spirit. Isn't that what Ezekiel said in the 36th chapter around the 26th verse? He said, God said, I will take that old heart. I will take that heart of flesh and I will give them a new heart. I will take the heart, the stony heart out of their flesh. He takes the stony heart out. Come on, church. The stony heart out of your flesh and gives you a heart of flesh. Why does it give you a heart of flesh? Because you can't do anything with a stone. But a flesh can feel the emotions. Come on, lady. Come on. If you have a stony heart, say, God, you promised in your word that you'd move the stones out of my heart. You, I, I know I'm mad at my husband right now, but God, you promised you'd move that Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me. I'm going to go right there. You promised that you'd move the stone. I'm mad at my supervisor right now, but you promised that you'd move the stone. I'm mad at my children right now. I'm mad at myself right now. Because I shouldn't have, but I did. But God, you promised that you'd take the stony heart and give me a heart of flesh so that you can fashion it the way you would have it to be. He didn't, what really confused me is that he just had a dream, Pastor Q, where God was promising him all this wealth and all this land and his posterity. But look at the position now. Look at the humble place he's at right now. All I want, can I have some bread? Can I have just a change of clothes on my back? Can you just keep me in, not any way, don't keep me in just any way, keep me in this way, in this way that I go. Keep me in the way that you've set up for me. Keep me in the way that you've directed for me. Keep me in the way of the promise. Do that for me, God. If you do that for me, God, I'll be grateful. Very simplistic prayer, but that's what happens. When you have a change in heart, you take away the stone. You allow God to deal with the stone in your heart. Don't you know the stone stops you? The stone stops you from progressing. The stone stops you from being happy. Oh, you, you don't believe it? Guess what? Let me. It's vulnerable, right? So if you if you can't if you don't let get nothing can come in then nothing can go out. If you're not putting, if the stone is blocking things going out, then nothing can't come in. I'm trying, Simone. <laughs> Shoot, I want to. <laughs> but you got to know that. You got to know that. You have to reflect on it. That's why he had to go to that still place. And know that he was God. It wasn't a punishment. It was God redirecting his life. He says, I'm going to take these stones. And I'm going to mark this place. I 
I've had an encounter with God and I have to remember this. I got to take these stones that's a representation of where I came from but not who I am. Leaving those things which are behind I got to press I got to there's a press, there's a press, there's a press, there's a press. I got to press, not without direction, but toward the mark. There's a mark that God, there's a mark that God has called you to press towards. The frustration is tied up in your resistance to the press. The frustration happens when you go against the press. But when you go in obedience to what God is directing you to, there's a promise. Forgetting those things which are behind. But God, every time I look at me, I remember those things which are behind because it's me. Herein lies the paradox. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Be ye transformed by the renewing so every day I have to renew when I lay down and sleep. Renew my mind, oh God. Renew my determination. Renew my character. Renew, renew, renew. Let the old things pass away. Because I want to be new in you. I want to be new in what you've called me to do. I don't want to bring what happened to me before into my new. Because then it'll represent my old. And I got to let that go. If I'm going to walk in the promise. If I'm going to walk in the promise. I have to know that my mind, my mind has to be transformed. And this occurs because surely, 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 surely God is in this place. It has to do with the physical place. It has to do with the emotional place. It has to do with a mindset that I know he will never leave me nor forsake me. He's my everything. If I have him when I think I have nothing, when my heart is overwhelmed, when my heart is overwhelmed, when my heart is overwhelmed, He just leads me, leads me to that rock. That's why he had to build the pillar with the rock. Because now, as Christians, we're led to the chief cornerstone. The one which the builders rejected. And being confident of this very thing, he that has begun, he's begun a good word. I'm just a good word. I'm just a good word to marry. I don't care how busted up you think I am. God says I'm a good word. And you know what, Nessa? He's about performing. See, they dance. They minister. Some people call it performance, but God is a true performer. 
He's the true performer. He performs miracles in my life. I'm a walking, living, breathing, talking miracle. I said it, I'm going to say it again. I'm a walking, breathing, living, talking miracle. Everything about me, Oscar, is a miracle. And when you know you're a miracle, you can stand having done all to stand. You think you've done all. That's a good place for God. When you think that you've done all, having done all to stand, it says stand. You got to stand on his word. You got to stand on his truth. You got to stand knowing that he loves you. He loves you. Greater love hath no man than this. Then a man lay down his life for his friends. What a friend. What a friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, I need the church to help me. I said, what a friend. What a friend. Oh, I'm going to come over here because surely, surely God is in this place. What a friend. Oh, God. What a friend. Oh, taste. Oh, you got to taste it. You got to taste him. You have to taste him. You have to open up your mouth and as something goes out, something's going to come in. The... That's why you got to open your mouth because as you open your mouth to say something, you're tasting. Oh, you're tasting and you're seeing that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Trust him. Trust him. He's never, he's never, I don't care what the situation is. I don't care what your mind is telling you. He is the God that has the perfect record. And if he fails, it becomes success. Just like that. If God fails, it becomes successful. Because he never, ever fails. Come on, put your hands together. Oh, come on. Put them together like you believe. Like you believe. Surely, come on, surely, surely God, surely God, surely the Lord is in this place. Oh, he's in this place, church. He brought you here today because he's here. No longer hopeless, but hopeful. No more but doubtful, but now you have faith. You have faith. I remember when it was so difficult. When I was transitioning my life and my best friends, I, they didn't want to be bothered with me. I couldn't drive and I depended on them to take me places. And here I am now. I don't have no friends and I want to do and I can't do it. And I was like, God, why am I thus? But he has to separate you. Church, don't fight the separation. You're uniquely different for a reason. And it's okay. That's why we have to be here. Unified. Because when we get here, we get built up, Ron. You get built up, baby. You get your strength. Your strength. Amen. Amen. Whew. This was good. I know it was good because it's working for me. <laughs> it's working for me. It's working for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because it's working for me. You might be here today and you need a Jacob experience. Maybe you've invited the Lord into your heart and, you know, because you're around the church people, you do the church things, but you need God to give you a revelation. You need him to give you a, a prophetic vision for your life. I want you to come. See, lady, I just want to pray for you. Because it's time for you to line up with what God has for you. Allow God to take the stone out of your heart and give you a heart of flesh. 
so that he can transition you. Are you going to be, is there anyone that wants to be transitioned? Has everyone received Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior? Good. Well, come on, those that want to be transitioned into his prophetic division, get a prophetic vision. Are you here? Tired of doing the same thing Sunday after Sunday? You want something different? Come on, come on. Don't look, how about we worship and praise? How about we bless God to touch their hearts? so that they can come into being what God has called them to be. There's a call going out today. I want to be what you want me to be, God, but I'm struggling. I'm struggling, God, but I want to get it together because I know other lives are dependent upon me. Oh, you know your, those lives are dependent upon you. Come on. I see you. You're here. Come on. Come on. Don't be afraid. I came to the altar every Sunday. Every Sunday until I got it together. I didn't care who saw me. Come on, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Surely God is in this place. Surely God is in this place. Surely God is in this place. Amen. I messed up, but I need to get back on track. Amen. 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 Come on, bless the Lord for those that came forward. Surely, 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 surely the Lord is in this place. Surely the Lord is in this place. Amen. Those of you at the altar, lift your hands up. Amen. God is going to do this. God, and you know what? You're going to be the one that walks around and tells people, I was this, but now I'm this. God brought me out. God, and you're going to be a testimony, a living testimony. It's going to happen. The past is behind you. The best is in front of you. Come on, begin to worship the Lord. Come on, thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah.